So I might have to be a little harsh here, but this is too obvious for the whole Halo community. Also, I know 343 knows this as well, which is what makes this so much more frustrating to me. When Halo Infinite first launched, I was enjoying myself. I think everybody was, but at this point I can no longer do that. The current state and the lack of content is obviously one of the main issues, but it's also a bit more than that to me now. Is the fact that the studio time and time again has managed to fuck up each one of their Halo titles. I just don't understand how they keep missing the mark on what a Halo game should be at launch. Let's start at the beginning with 343 with their first shot at a Halo game that they could call theirs. Halo 4 Halo 4 kept most of the things people disliked about Halo Reach. Instead of making a true sequel to Halo 3's gameplay, it was more like a continuation of Reach, but it felt like a cheap clone of COD at the same time as well. The game was confusing and I didn't really enjoy it. The campaign was alright, but that's about all it had going for it in my opinion. While I messed with the Forge mode in this game a little bit, I never truly fully invested myself into it because the canvases they gave you just weren't my cup of tea. Especially Forge Island, even though that's probably the one I made the most crappy racetracks on. The MCC was a fucking disaster and a massive kick in the nuts to the Halo community for 4 plus years. I don't even need to go any further, but I will mention Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary and Halo 2 Anniversary because I don't think that these are bad games. I know that Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary was technically 343's first game, but it's not their own game if you get what I'm saying. Neither is Halo 2 Anniversary. They're good games, I'm glad to have them. Hell, I even like the maps that they added to Reach for Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. But Halo 4 is where they truly got their boots in the mud to me. I just wanted to say that real quick. Also, I will recognize that the MCC is a great game now, but it took far longer than it ever should have to become a great game. Next is Halo 5, which wasn't a terrible game, it just wasn't what I or most people seem to have wanted from a Halo game, especially at launch, missing stuff like Social Playlist for a month, Big Team Battle for a month, Forge two months later, countless modes brought in after launch, no split screen at all, or pre-game lobbies, but if there's any redeeming factor about Halo 5 that I will give it, and I think everybody will agree with, was the custom games browser and Forge undoubtedly. I'll give credit where credit is due, but the campaign was awful in my opinion, and the multiplayer maps were bland as all hell, and also cluttered and tight. It felt like the environments were smothering you. At least they did for me in the arena side of things. I generally didn't like the big team battle maps, mainly because of the fact that they were all forge maps, and it just felt like 343 forgot about us. The game took too long to become what Halo fans expected a Halo game to be at launch, and unfortunately, while I might have put a considerable amount of time into Halo 5, most of it was either spent in Forge, Warzone, or Warzone Firefight, and most of the time it was solo. The community just didn't have the same energy it had back in the day with Bungie, and you could feel it. And 343 is always there saying that they hear us, but do they really? I mean, look at Season 2 of Halo Infinite and how they have effectively removed skill jumps from multiplayer maps and things in the campaign players have been practicing and or playing with for the last 6 months, and you have the nerve to tell us that you hear us? It's disrespectful that you people even think we should believe you at this point. Whether you put them back in the game or not, the fact still remains that you spent valuable time and resources to remove them in the first place, which is still baffling to look back on. To me, 343 is like being a cop, catching and arresting a local crackhead once a week, smoking crack in the dumpster behind your local mall's TGI Fridays, but somehow always manages to make bond for the following week. That, uh, that got specific really quick. And, and every time you catch him, he's like, yeah, I, I swear I'm gonna change, officer. And then a week goes by and he's back in the same dumpster smoking crack again, and you're just like... So, so you're never gonna change, huh? And the crackhead just like, yeah. What, what can I say? I'm a fucking crackhead. That's three four three saying that they hear us and our complaints and are gonna take them seriously. But how can we take you seriously, three four three, when we keep catching you smoking crack every week? At this point, just make a twenty-page blog post about how you're testing our patience and seeing how you can effectively turn the whole Halo community into a bunch of fucking guinea pigs. And then we get to Halo Infinite. And let me say this real quick, I really don't like being negative, I don't. I haven't made a video in so long because I don't want to be negative, but I have to get this shit off my chest because I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you. This game needs a lot of work. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get back to it. Now I think deep down in Halo Infinite, there's a good game, but boy it's buried under a bunch of crack pipes and technical hurdles. 
but that's not what I want to talk about today. What I want to talk about is how I think Bungie managed to grow its Halo fanbase and nurtured it, versus how I think 343 has managed to almost kill the Halo fanbase that Bungie built up. Maybe not kill, I don't know, that's a strong word. Anyways, let me explain. So we start at Halo CE, a game that revolutionizes the first person shooter genre on the console. It offers a campaign, a robust multiplayer that had the depth necessary for competitors, but accessible to the point where anyone could hop on the sticks and just feel good about playing Halo. It offered a two player split screen campaign, four player split screen for multiplayer, and even the option to system link for the ability to play with up to 16 players on LAN. Because Xbox Live wasn't a service when the Xbox or Halo launched, but would become the feature causing the catalyst that made Halo as big as it is today, and Xbox Live becoming a necessary feature for the Xbox going forward. But Bungie didn't stop there, they said, oh yeah, y'all loved Halo Combat Evolved? Boom, bitch, here's Halo 2, a whole new badass campaign you could play with a buddy on split screen, or how about that multiplayer that had all new game modes, new maps, more vehicles, new weapons, a ranking system, playable elites, dual wielding, and this game would go on to revolutionize Xbox Live as a service and online gaming as a whole. It would make sure everyone that was also making games knew Bungie wasn't fucking around and that they were here to innovate and blow your motherfucking socks off. Then we get to Halo 3, a game that took Halo 2, flipped it on its head, gave it a smack on the master cheeks, and pooped out all new community features that would bring everyone together for years to come. Those features were two player split screen campaign, but up to four players through Xbox Live, you had four player split screen for multiplayer, a whole new multiplayer experience that offered new maps, new modes on top of the old ones, as well as new weapons, equipment, multiple multiplayer playlists for social and ranked, custom games, a ranking system, again, this time it's a bit different than Halo 2's, not very important, but still, Forge, a file shared to share maps, modes, pictures, and videos with everyone who played Halo 3, and a pre-game lobby that showed everyone in the lobby and who was going to be on each team. You could even see player accommodations to their service record, or their file share, or their rank, and even what armor they were wearing, all from the pre-game lobby. Hell, you could even party up people through the press of a button after each match and meet a bunch of new people every time you played, which was a very nice way to bring people together. Also, dual wielding makes its unfortunate final return here. Then we get to ODST, a game that didn't have too long in the oven but still managed to innovate in the areas that it could. One example is by having the biggest playable area at that time in a Halo campaign with Mombasa Streets, and as well as creating Firefight. ODST would also retain certain features from Halo 3 such as the file share and theater mode. Two player split screen with four player network co-op. This game would also have the coolest set of achievements that had the community working together for what seemed like years, chasing a common goal. That goal was obtaining recon armor in Halo 3 through getting all the vidmaster achievements. ODST would also come with a multiplayer only disc for Halo 3 which gave you everything Halo 3's multiplayer had to offer. This would help bring the community together on the Halo 3 side of things so the community wasn't as divided because of map pack DLCs. Finally ODST would go on to remove dual wielding. Next is Bungie's outing with Halo, and that's Halo Reach, a game that took pretty much everything Bungie had been building up and all the sub communities had been fostering for the last 10 years they had been working on Halo for and they dumped all these features into one game. Basically as a sort of thank you for sticking with them through their journey with Halo and for the fan base that they created and were leaving behind at that point in time to 343. Halo Reach had four player split screen for multiplayer co-op, campaign with two player split screen and four players over Xbox Live, custom games, new modes on top of it, if not all of the old ones, Forge, Firefight, Theater, File Share, pregame lobbies, customization to go after, a ranking system with multiple playlists for it, as well as social playlists, new vehicles as well as old ones, and the same with weapons, daily and weekly challenges, and a new credit system. This would be the game that set the gold standard for Halo going forward for the fan base because it was the expectations that Bungie had obviously set for themselves. Out of all the things I listed, the biggest things Bungie got rid of within their stay at Microsoft on Halo was dual wielding, some weapons and vehicles here and there, and some modes maybe. Nothing honestly too substantial. The most substantial one I can think of is how their ranking system was a little different from one game to another. But that's the difference between Old Bungie and 343. Old Bungie knew how important all of these things were that they had built up. 
They knew all of these things were very meaningful to the experience that they had crafted and added nothing but guaranteed longevity to the product. Because all these features, modes, and tools helped create different sub-communities within your fanbase and it gave everyone some place in Halo to call home, and reasons to stick around. Whether you wanted to run around as an elite, or play super sweaty and competitive, or make badass montage short machinimas, even making maps or modes, or just taking cool pictures and videos of random shit that would happen with the physics in Halo while you're playing campaign or multiplayer, or speedrunning the Halo campaigns. There were so many different ways to have fun with Halo, and Bungie fully realized that potential by the time they were done with Halo 3, and they knew if Reach was going to be their last game, they knew they had to do it big and go out with a bang. Old Bungie knew what made Halo great and knew how important your place was in their community. They knew how important your role and involvement for the longevity of their games were. 343 literally builds up new communities within Halo while chopping down old ones, and then they'll turn around and do it again and expect us to be happy. You want a perfect example? Warzone. For Warzone, they literally ditched making any big team battle maps themselves in Halo 5 and left it to the wayside for the Forgers to pick up the dirty work for them. Then boom, Halo Infinite comes out, and that same Warzone community that they were building up, they just left on the cutting room floor this time around so that they could give us the return of big team battle instead. Like hell yeah 343, way to neglect the big team battle community for 6 years, bring big team battle back with actual developer made maps, but totally neglect the fact that for the last 6 years people were playing this new thing you made called Warzone, and they probably thought you guys were going to iterate upon Warzone in your next Halo title. When you neglect every sub-community that old Bungie would have cherished and fostered, these are the diminishing returns that you will see. That's because you keep showing us that you don't want to grow this fan base. at least that's what you've managed to show me over the last 10 years, 343. That is that you don't care about the sub-communities that built up the whole Halo community, and don't prioritize the core of what makes Halo's gears turn. I swear it's like they just keep trying to boil Halo down to just being multiplayer and campaign. Yes, those things are important, but we need everything else that surrounds Halo to really keep people engaged in the product, like custom games, Forge, co-op campaign, split screen for both multiplayer and campaign, file share, theater, custom games browser, and all the necessary modes that go along with Forge, Firefight, a progression system, pre-game lobbies. I could keep going if I really thought about it. I just find it funny that Bungie understood that if they were going to put something in their game, that it was probably going to stick around for the long haul because you don't just pour a bunch of time, money, and resources into something to only use it once. Some people might think that reusing stuff is lazy, but I believe that if what you're reusing has a necessary purpose within your product and works, then it needs to be there. Make improvements and refine your product, but don't ever get rid of the necessary components. The core fundamentals that your consumers expect because that's when you effectively lose the people who care the most about your product in the first place, and that should never be a goal if you're a business. 343 was handed a billion dollar recipe with Halo from Bungie and just turned around and spit on it. I've tried to enjoy Infinite, but everything that's been wrong with the game is still an issue nearly a year down the line. And honestly, the desync has become so bad to me that it's just getting to the point where I'm about to uninstall it altogether. Maybe I should just come back in like two years when it's inevitably a completely different product and hopefully in a much better state than it is now because I can't even begin to explain how frustrating it is to start shooting at someone and the game just start throwing me around like I'm in a pinball machine and then I die. I've been a Halo fan pretty much my entire life. I've met countless cool people through these games and I still think this game has the potential to turn itself around and become a good place for Halo fans to reside for a while. It's going to take a lot of time and patience, and that fucking sucks. We shouldn't have to wait any longer for the good stuff to be in the game. We waited six years. The good stuff should have been there day one, but it wasn't, and that's the point of this video. I just want 343 to nail a game down on release. I want to see the Halo community full steam ahead day one, and not stop till the party's over years down the line. Like back in the good old Halo 3 days, or Halo Reach days. It was a good time to be a Halo fan back then. Unfortunately, Halo has become a product of its environment, whereas it used to stand out from its environment and created an environment that was entirely its own to thrive in. I just want 343 to truly realize the potential of having a complete Halo game at launch, because if I know anything, it's that Halo has the most passionate, dedicated, creative, and loyal fanbase out there in the shooter realm, and if you give them everything up front, 
to show you how to make a game last way beyond its projected lifespan. Do I think Halo Infinite will recover when everything that needs to be there finally gets into the game? No. And I think it's because the expectations people have with the Halo brand that Bungie left behind. This isn't a new franchise. This franchise used to hold itself to a very high standard back in the day, and I don't think it's wrong for people to still hold it to that standard. These things should have been there day one, when you had the largest amount of people playing the game. But that's the first impression they're always going to have now with Halo Infinite from the public's viewpoint. The only reason a game like No Man's Sky can make a comeback is because there wasn't this standard the public had to hold it up to. It was a new thing trying to find its place in the market, and people were more willing to help it find its way to that place. Halo doesn't have that luxury of being a new IP. We have standards that we hold these developers to from the 20 years that we've spent with this franchise. I hope Halo Infinite recovers, I really do, but I think the only way to do that now is through something new and big like a battle royale or something along the lines of a big mode like that. Something new and exciting that Halo has never done before. But it needs all of the core features of Halo as well so people have multiple things to do under the same roof. Who knows, maybe I'm wrong and Halo Infinite makes a full recovery. But I know for sure if they make a new game, just have everything there day one and the success you will see 343 will be what you've been looking for all along. I'll leave you off with this quote from the act man. I'm about to share the secret of this franchise's success with you and I'll use an analogy to do it. Let's use Halo 3 as an example. It's like a giant statue that Bungie or the developers created. Now where most games, the creators of the statue have to raise it themselves. With Halo, the community is able to do a good chunk of that lifting, right? We want to hold this statue as high as it possibly can. So you got the Griffball boys and they're like, all right, guys, we're, we're holding up this side. And then you got the firefight gang who's holding up that side. Then the custom game Chads and Forge crew swagger in and they push the statue higher into the air. The co-op campaign homies arrive and now they're they're helping out. The modders come in, they push a button and a giant metal arm stoops underneath and pushes the statue even higher than what was previously imagined. Then the montagers and machinima crowd show up and they provide stability support. Don't worry guys, we got your backs. Then the competitive ranked players come in, the pro players, and suddenly the statue is raised so fucking high off the ground that people looking at other statues can't help but turn their heads and say, what's that? What's that? It's fucking Halo. My point with all of this is that Halo is special because unlike most other games, the communities within Halo, big or small, all play a role in elevating the franchise beyond what its creators are capable of doing. They can actually create content for the game. But when we arrive at Infinite, so many of these communities that have held up the franchise in the past aren't here to help. So the weight is distributed across matchmaking crowd, the competitive scene, and the campaign enjoyers. So those, those people holding up Infinite right now are running out of energy and the statue is sinking. I don't know if that was a, like an absurd analogy or whatever, but do you get it, you know? All these elements work together in harmony. If you have a forge mode, you can create maps and custom games. And if you have a server browser, then people can look for that shit without, you know, inviting all their buddies. It's like they all work in harmony to create this incredible community. And that's the biggest strength that Halo has. That is the type of foundation built to last 10 years.